change is a constant. Some things, like how much you take to a casino, for instance, can change over time. Uh, whether increasing or decreasing your bankroll by a lot, uh, for many good reasons uh, to do either, uh, doing so means a significant change to your gambling style. If we don't adapt to that new bankroll, there's a world of hurt lur lurking around the corner. Let's talk about making a bankroll adjustment and what you need to be aware of for it not only to go well, but also to be a great experience. For And of course, I'll be taking your questions because this is a live stream. I'm only saying that because, of course, the people who are live here now know it's a live stream, but you may be watching this after the fact. Hello to you watching this recording or listening to the podcast later. Thank you for being here and be sure to subscribe for notifications so you can have your questions answered the next time I do one of these. But either way, stick around and I'm sure it will be of value to you, even if you are watching this after the fact. But those of you who are here live, thank you so much. <clears throat> if you have a question, use hashtag question. That's so I can be sure to spot your question to me instead of comments in the live chat to each other. After all, this is also a community video where friends check in about how their slots play has been going lately, among many other things. Uh, friends are being made every time I have a live stream. And thanks to the other creators of slots channels who are quietly watching my live streams. I'm gl glad so many of you have decided to watch. And Educating yourself is important, and the gradual passing down of my concepts onto your audience members is how our industry grows and improves. So please enjoy the show, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me at john at professorslots.com. Improve your slots performance in 30 days or less with my 30 days to play slots smarter and win. You also get three free valuable bonuses. Uh, um, including one month free to my Slots IQ membership, where you'll get community support and accountability. Visit professorslots.com slash 30 days. This is that website there for more about uh, free bonuses, course content, and testimonials from participants. As you can see, there's a lot of testimonials. Uh, and there is uh, information on each section. Uh, of the course uh, for you to review and see what it is that I'm talking about. Uh, and then, of course, I have more information on the bonuses. Okay. And if you um, are still on the fence about whether to buy the course, the price, its price is increasing this weekend. It will no longer be 40% off for an $80 savings at as of midnight Eastern on Sunday. Uh, hey, hey, Magpie. Um, uh, uh, and um, on, on Sunday, July 31st, as you can see from this countdown clock, three hours, nine, three days, nine hours, 56 minutes, 50 seconds away. Uh, so once you purchase the course, you have lifetime access. If you don't have the course, don't wait to do it later. Time is running out. Transitioning to a different size bankroll means Transitioning to a different size bankroll means changing your winning slot stra strategies. Several circumstances can drive. Uh, let me make sure I'm seeing the latest chat messages uh, and um, what's going on over there. Uh, good. Um, several circumstances can drive wanting to make such a change. Not really talking about wanting to make a change so much uh, here. Uh, that's that's other live streams, but uh, here we're talking about, so you did. Uh, so uh, for example, you may have become bored with your current gambling style because everything that can be done to improve performance has already been done. So as a player, you're ready for the next challenge or maybe personal finances have significantly increased in terms of disposable income. So the gambling style chosen originally no longer matches your lifestyle as it did once. Whatever reason exists for wanting to make a gambling style change, including simply, simply gaining a better understanding of how casinos and the gaming industry works, the key element for making such a change mostly involves improved money management skills. That is to say, changing styles usually significantly changes the relative amount of bankroll needed, whether it is increased or decreased. Do you understand? Changing bankroll sizes means changing gambling styles, which we are talking about today. But changing gambling styles also means changing bankrolls. 
which I discussed in my book, Learning to Win, in the last chapter, the last section of chapter seven, six player styles matched to player goals. For example, a few years a few years ago, my slots gambling experiences experiences involved large pay, uh, large bank rolls. Yet changes in economic conditions and ownership of a local casino nearby have led, along with wanting to better understand the enter entertainment style of gambling, uh, led to a decision to start gambling with smaller bank rolls for me, using. Different size bankrolls generally results in learning to handle more or perhaps performing better um, or any financial record keeping than was previously done. Not keeping good gambling records is common when spending a few hundred dollars during a single casino visit. But it is avoiding it, you know, it's no longer a luxury that you can afford to have when jumping up to $1,000 or $3,000 bankrolls. For example, it may become convenient to hire an accountant to handle a significant increase in tax-related documents associated with winning more W-2 hand pays, W-2G hand pays, in which a player was th than what a player was previously accustomed, <laughs> which might be none. Or a player may have to purchase and learn to use spreadsheet software to effectively handle an increase in gambling records and notes driven by the change in gambling style, rather than just the change in bankroll size. Have you ever gotten a hand pay jackpot, a W2G form? If so, imagine getting a stack of them where each one must be entered separately into your income tax preparation software. Casino name, full address, telephone number, and tax ID. Cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste. One, two, three, four, five, cut and paste. Um, again and again and again for each of 50 W2Gs, or 100, or 250. I entered 40 to 50 W2Gs for two years running, and it was a lot of work. Changing, I mean, I was compensated <laughs> by those wins because I made a profit. But nevertheless, it was a lot of work. Um, I, I came to dread it. Um, changing bankroll sizes is a great deal of fun in my opinion. I mean, I certainly enjoyed going from a $500 bankroll for six months up to a $3,000 bankroll for a couple of years, and lately back down to a $300 bankroll for my casino trip reviews at New to Me Casinos. So, uh, um, is that good? Good. Uh, yes, it can be a bit of a challenge to make such a change. However, it may be fun for everyone uh, in, and, in and of itself. Uh, it may not be fun for everyone. Uh, such a change certainly has the potential financial windfall, which offers a kind of compensation. Again, this can apply to both increasing or decreasing the size of the bankroll. If a player is willing and able to make a change in their gambling style, even if switching styles is to support a reduced bankroll, they need to educate themselves about the new form and then go ahead and, and, and do it. Having patient, have patience learning a new style as retraining yourself and learning the appropriate habits related to it may take a while to adopt. As, but as usual, have fun and enjoy. My, my best advice is it about how to change a, a particular style gambling from one highly individual, individualized, individualized approach to another requiring a higher bankroll. It's, it's, it's instead, it's about the unexpected pitfalls of making significant changes to your gambling style. We're all on a slots journey, hiking through mountains, over mountains, hiking through jungles, hiking, I don't know, passing over mountain passes and navigating ocean journeys. Uh, <laughs> wow, I went on a trip with that sentence. Um, for, for instance, are you, for instance, are you ready to go up to the next tax bracket or going up to the next tax bracket after that? What is the highest tax bracket anyway? How do you go about determining the fair market value for an influx of comps received from the casino? To not get to not get in trouble with the IRS when submitting those comps as taxable income, and how do you keep track of all that? Hint: That's one of the valuable bonuses in my online course. 
<laughs> um, uh, uh, Camilla says in the live chat, please um, uh, uh, hit the like button. So please hit the like button. I, I should say it like every 15 minutes, <laughs> but I, I just put a pillow up. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, players uh, also may be surprised to know that understanding city taxes, not federal and local city, uh, is significant, especially important to a continued financial health when switching gambling styles, when switching bankroll amounts, especially those styles that significantly increase the number of W2G hand pays one. I know I was shocked when I found out. Um, here, are, uh, uh, here are two questions you need to know the answers to, no matter the gambling style used. First, Slots enthusiasts need to know if they pay local or city income taxes. If they do, they need to understand the relative difference between the local income tax rate and the local uh, city income tax for any casino where the tax would, uh, where the uh, W2G's uh, hand pays were won. Your city, and if the casino is in a different city, if it's in a city, and if it's in a different city, what is the two different local municipal city tax rates and if your home is in a city with lower city taxes then you will owe money uh, and so uh, i'll get into my not being an income tax professional that you should talk to one about this i'll get into that in a moment but so you want to know what the difference is between the two uh, and um, you know we can talk about a couple of different scenarios. What if a player doesn't have municipal or city taxes? Then there's no cause for alarm. Uh, yes, you may pay local taxes at the casino due to it being within a city, uh, and you may pay those local taxes uh, on one or more taxable jackpots. And yes, those taxes may not be refunded or otherwise returned. State and federal taxes allow gambling deductions if you've kept sufficiently good records to use gambling deductions and are able to use gambling deductions. But some states are, have a very specific income tax uh, rule that uh, it, very specific income tax rules that can be surprising. For instance, the state of Oklahoma has placed a cap on gambling deductions for non-residents. May, maybe I should repeat that. The state of Oklahoma has placed a cap on gambling deductions for non-residents. So if you're in Texas and going to Oklahoma and you get hand pays, that first uh, income tax preparation uh, uh, for the state of Oklahoma uh, as a non-residence can be, wow, shocking. Uh, I think it's uh, the cap is $17,000, but I haven't checked it lately to see if it's been changed. One of the things I sometimes say is income tax burdens aren't pleasant, but unexpected income tax burdens are a whole lot worse. I am not an income tax professional, so please check with one. Uh, in December, last December, I had a live stream with my CPA on the show to answer your questions because, well, he is an income tax professional. Consulting with your accountant or income tax professional along with sound financial record keeping can result in either a tax um, annual tax refund or no significant tax payment from both state and federal income tax returns. This non-problem is what some gamblers re refer to as a wash. It's due to, um, uh, to having no significant annual tax payment uh, or tax refund for gambling. If a player, you can deduct up to your winnings, but you have to have a record. Uh, again, not a tax income tax professional. This is all what I've read uh, at uh, irs.gov. And if you search for gambling uh, records uh, uh, and deductions, uh, you can find all that. And I have links elsewhere in my articles on doing just this. If a player does have local or city taxes, then they may find themselves effectively blocked from gambling at a relatively high level. Uh, I, I, I was surprised to find myself in a, and when I moved to Ohio, I didn't even realize I had local taxes. I didn't realize I was just inside the city limit in my apartment. And that uh, one of the first things I did after I found out was move <laughs> because, because a 2% tax uh, um, on half my hand pays and a 0.2% tax on the other half because it was a 
two percent tax rate in the city in which I lived, but only 1.8 in downtown Cincinnati and the other casino, Belterra Park, is outside of the city limits, so there was none. And so, you know, either I had a two percent hand pay, two uh, percent bill, or a point two percent bill uh, on, on all my hand pays, uh, and that ended up being thousands of dollars unexpectedly. Took a while for me to, I, I got an agreement with the local t income tax preparer, uh, not preparer, um, uh, um, officer in the, in the city that was assigned to that. And we worked on an agreement, a, a payment plan uh, for, oh, that took, took a while to pay because it was just like, what is this? So, um, like I said, um, income tax burdens can be hard, but unexpected ones are worse. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, uh, it's funny how we remember how we remember pain. Um, uh, yes, uh, Camilla, uh, gambling winnings are not taxed in Canada, fortunately, uh, and uh, there's lots of things people um, uh, say like they're not taxed in in Nevada, and that's not correct. Uh, the state doesn't tax it, but federal still exists because you're still in the United States. Uh, so uh, there's there's a couple of things going on. And um, I, I will tell you that you get a couple of hand pays uh, and you, you don't get it right, then you get audited and then you're right after that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I did not get it wrong on my first hand pays. These were in 2004. Uh, I did not get it wrong. The casino did, and I got audited. Uh, and, and they said, you know, what are all these, basically they said, what are all these W2Gs? And I said, um, could you, you know, send them, uh, I don't think they were in the tax form, uh, at the time. So I was like, sure, sure. I made a copy of them and I, I sent them off. Uh, and apparently the casino hadn't submitted them only i had and so it wasn't really an audit of me it was an audit of casino 2004 uh, all you know all these things that you sometimes can see and hap see happening in the background um anyway uh, no need to name the casino there so uh if a if a player does have uh local or city taxes they can find themselves blocked because that can be a huge burden many, many taxable jackpots can result in that increase. And uh, if not aware of the difficulty, players can get into severe financial hardship if they proceed to gamble heavily. Anyway, I did. I mean, I did and I didn't. Uh, I started to do the whole high limit rooms thing six weeks uh, from the end of the year. And, and in that six weeks, I got 52 uh, hand pays, and one for twenty-seven thousand dollars, that sort of thing, and I got to seven stars status, uh, more than seven stars status. Um, uh, the there's one hundred seventy-five thousand uh, uh, reward points. Um, uh, actually, one hundred eighty-five thousand uh, report uh, reward points, which um, they're five dollars each. So that was like you know a huge number of dollars that was just being cycled, um, and the hand pays themselves were over a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Just just the amounts on those, and and then I made a thirty percent profit. So I had was taxed on the thirty. Anyway, <laughs> before any of that happened. Uh, I was blithely unaware <laughs> of anything uh, having to do with increasing the, my bankroll from under, you know, five hundred dollars or less to three thousand. And so I wanted to let you guys know about some of some of these things to watch for. You learn fast, um, and so uh, please understand that more than likely the local income tax office will not accept any gambling deductions related to gaming. That's the other thing. Um, you might uh, um, have uh, had deductions of, like I did, um, what was it, uh, nearly $70,000 uh, in federal and state. It, you know, it, it was like, well, you made $100,000. No, it was $100,000 uh, and I made $130,000. So I spent $100,000 $100, to make $130,000. So my profit was $30,000 or 30%. And federal and state were all like, yeah, so it's taxed on, on the $30,000, but the local income tax office, and I don't mean to go on about this, they didn't accept gambling deductions. 
And I don't know what the whole country does uh, because I don't know every city's tax office as well as I know the local one <laughs> or the one I used to live in. Um, and so uh, they taxed it uh, on the additional 100, on the 150 or on, on, on 130 and not just the 30. Uh, so yeah, uh, I don't mean to scare people about this, but um, walking in unawares on your slots journey into a dark cave with a, a heavy breathing of an animal <laughs> coming from three different directions around you, uh, you know, it can be a little scary. Uh, so this caution is for players uh, required to submit an annual tax revenue form to the local or city government. It includes the often relatively massive gambling deductions routinely accepted with states, state and federal income tax returns. Perhaps you don't fully understand this potential uh, local tax issue. I, I know it shocked me. But increasing your bankroll can result in hand pays, a, uh, a, a lot of hand pays and W2G hand, uh, jackpots. Routinely handling W2G jackpots uh, becomes a necessity with larger bankrolls. Once again, this time with feeling, if you have a local income tax taxes, uh, be sure to consult with your local income tax preparer. This suggestion is especially relevant if you dramatically increase your slots gambling, uh, slot machine gambling performance as I did by, you know, watching my content and educating yourself about slots to improve your gambling performance. Remember, we're all on a slots journey. So let's talk about some specifics. Let's say you always that you've always taken a $300 bankroll to the casino for slots and now find yourself able to comfortably comfortably afford to take $1000 again why it can be for all sorts of reasons for me it happened because i was suddenly getting overtime for the first time in my life honestly i never thought i'd get that as a salaried engineer it was only straight time but working 60 to 65 hours a week was a regular thing for me for years without with only being paid for 40 hours a week and then uh you know this year <laughs> for 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 the my professor slots business i'm i i've been working over 80 hours a week since the middle of april <laughs> and and um over 100 for like the last two months but before being laid off as an aerospace engineer in my last job i would work 20 to 30 hours of straight overtime in a week which after a year of doing that meant a 50% increase in my annual salary. So yeah, I spent $500 every couple of months at the casino. Well, I would take $500, spend half of it, then leave with $250. But then I had my epiphany about winning at slots. And why is that not updating? It should be updating. I don't see why it isn't. Okay. Um, Hmm. Oh, there it is. Good. Some of my uh, YouTube stuff is like hesitating. Uh, so we're good. <laughs> um, right. Uh, so um, uh, let's see, where was I at? Um, yeah, so I would go three or four. So when I had my epiphany about winning at slots, if I can use that word when it was 10 years in the making, I, and suddenly I was bringing $2,500 um, uh, uh, to, to a $3,000 bankroll to the casino three or four times a week, I enjoyed earning 50 or so hand pays while also getting seven star status with Caesars Rewards uh, in six weeks. But it was a big change even before finding out more about my annual income tax preparation. If you instead jump from a $300 bankroll to a $1,000 bankroll, it uh, looks like YouTube got caught up on the live chat. Great. Uh, I don't think you saw any of that, maybe. Um, uh, anyway, uh, um, so instead of, uh, you know, if you instead jump from a $300 bankroll to a $1,000 bankroll, it, it'd be a little different from jumping from a $500 bankroll out on a main casino floor to, to making $20 to $30 bets in high limits with a $3,000 bankroll. For instance, most times $1,000 is, is, is not enough for the high limit room unless you're using my five spin method. If your casino doesn't have taste, $1,000 definitely isn't enough for the high limit room. 
The difference between $300 and $1,000 bankrolls means only a small change in gambling styles. If, For instance, if you use a Winner's Bank 200 or a Gamble Box, can you, you can't quite see it over there. Uh, it's too far in the distance. Uh, I have one of the uh, Gamble Boxes over there. If you use one of those lockable wallets, that's pretty much over. They are too small. Well, I suppose you could carry around several of them, three, four of them. So your previous preserving gains method may well be lost, and you'll have to come up with another one. I use my deposit-only uh, uh, front pocket. One front pocket and a pair of men's jeans can hold up to $20,000 in $100 bills. Not with a cell phone in it, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's why one front pocket uh, is, is used. The other one has my cell phone. Uh, but disciplining yourself to switch to that different preserving gains te technique may be necessary. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, the difference between... Uh, uh, Josh, um, actually, they do say uh, it exists. Um, you, you just can't hear them. Uh, there was a recent episode um, by a competitor, and the person that they were talking to said there was, but in the interview, they just missed it. So, yeah, get your facts straight. The difference between $300 and a $1,000 bankroll and <clears throat> a $3,000 bankroll is is big the difference between three hundred dollars and one thousand dollars and the three thousand dollar bankroll is big yes you can use that size bankroll out on the casino floor barely making eight dollars or eight dollar or ten dollar maximum bets on a penny machine or better yet any other denomination except one cent <laughs> um uh josh i don't provide links to competitors uh i'm sure you can find it uh, yes, you can use that size bankroll out on the casino floor, barely. Uh, and, uh, you know, by making $8 and $10 maximum bets on a penny machine, or better yet, any other denomination except one cent on a multi-denomination machine. But your high limit room definitely becomes an option with a $3,000 bankroll. But perhaps you'd like to take advantage of this. Uh, but perhaps you'd like to make only one change at a time. Do you see... Having a $3,000 bankroll gives you uh, lots of options for in a casino. And I need to do that. Good. Um, so you need a plan. As I tell my students, I don't care what your plan is. I care that you have a plan. What about bankrolls over $3,000? Well, playing slots with $3,000 or $5,000 bankrolls are pretty much the same. Only, you know, when you have over $10,000 bankroll, that things starts to that start, things start, start getting tricky again. Honestly, please don't play slots on your casino's one $100 denomination machine or one $500 denomination machine. You want a selection of slot machines to play, to choose from, not one or two. I've seen this mistake being made. I think it was the a lesser known NFL football player at the downtown Cincinnati casino that was making $100 bets. He went through something like $80,000, an $80,000 bankroll for a couple of hand pays. Um, and it wasn't <laughs> smaller hand pays, but may, I mean, more than we would normally see as a hand pay, uh, $10,000 hand pay or so. But when he was losing that much money, it was got a couple of those and, you know, but maybe you, you play slots at a casino that has a bunch of $100 and $500 denomination machines. Those do exist. And maybe you've brought $50,000, right? 500 60 cent minimum bets are what you get from spending a $300 bankroll. And 500 minimum bet minimum bets on a $100 denomination machine is $50,000. So you can win more than $300 with your $300 bankroll right? Sometimes. And so you would sometimes win more than $50,000 with your $50,000 bankroll. Maybe you make $100 over your $300 bankroll. That would be the same as winning $17,000 over your $50,000 bankroll. But how often do you spend your $300 bankroll and get back $200? 
with a fifty thousand dollar bankroll, that's that'd be like getting back only thirty three thousand dollars. Congratulations! The difference is a used car. Oh, and another thing: uh, uh, if you plan on using a fifty thousand dollar bankroll, check with the casino on how you actually put that money into the machine. Casinos have ways of handing out uh, has ways have ways for you hand them money, then load the machine with it, which don't in, doesn't involve you know spending twenty minutes an hour uh, inserting hundred dollar bills into the machine and filling the cash box, so the cash box has to be serviced first. So all that becomes um, it it when you go to a high enough bankroll, and we're not is this is not exclusively exclusively talking about um, like what some of my consultants uh, c clients have gone through, where they spent they spend ten million dollars in a few months. Uh, and so, you know, it's not, there, there are ways to handle the money and it's not cash. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, this, this, we're not focused that on that here. If you have a question like that, I'm, I'm, I'll be happy to take more calls, uh, and, and consultations on that. The time when the person was asking me about this, uh, we were talking about, um, making sure all the taxes were in, in place, uh, and that he had all the records that he needed. Um, so, uh, improve your slots play by, there it is, uh, improve your slots play, uh, in 30 days or less with my 30 days to play slots smarter and win. You also get three free valuable bonuses, including one month free to my slots IQ membership, where you'll get community support and accountability. Visit professorslots.com slash 30 days to learn more about the free bonuses, course content, and testimonials from participants. You can also see here the course curriculum, uh, and each one of these is expandable, but it's more of a description. Uh, uh, this is what's in the course, but uh, it's more of a description on the on the landing page at professorslots.com slash 30 days. But uh, if you're still on the fence about whether to buy the course, the price of the course is increasing this weekend. It will no longer be 40% off uh, um, for a $80 savings as of midnight Eastern on Sunday, July 31st. As you can see from this countdown clock, three days, nine hours, 27 minutes, 49 seconds uh, away. So once you've purchased the course, you'll have lifetime access. If you don't have the course, well, don't wait to do it later. Time is running out. So let's go over questions. Uh, on Tuesday, I didn't have a lot of questions, and I should have understood that. I think we got a, f a few of them today. So um, if uh, you don't have questions, I'm going to pull from my list of questions that I've gotten from emails and all over the place and, and, and share with you people's questions and my answers to them. So hey, everybody. Um, hey, Margaret. Let me uh, make sure that uh, everybody can see the uh, please use hashtag question when asking your question so that I can be sure to um, uh, spot it amongst uh, all the back and forth between people. Um, and I, I'm seeing wonderful conversations uh, uh, now uh, here. And so uh, and uh, Margaret, Margaret says, as I am listening, I am updating my gambling records. Uh, um, uh, Margaret has won a hand pay or two. Uh, I am especially proud of her um, uh, um, going to a casino in in Las Vegas. I don't mean to give away secrets here, but um, to go to a casino in Las Vegas that Brian Christopher um, was about to start his regularly scheduled show uh, and of playing, of recording, and, and you know, pl planned a week in advance, which the casino know, pr knew perfectly well. So uh, she got grabbed his machine 10 minutes before he showed up, got two hand pays, got off of it, and he did it. <laughs> and she's like, I think I took his hand pays. But I'm like, no, no, no. It was, um, there's this myth out there that the casino, um, uh, you know, allows him to win. Uh, and that's completely illegal. Uh, Brian Christopher has talked about it with others uh, that he was interviewing. That's completely illegal, right? But if you tell them where you, when you're going to be there and they put it into the schedule to have better odds on the machine that you told them that you would play and have been playing for like a year on a, on a Tuesday, <laughs> they can just set it high. 
with high odds. And I just love that Margaret would just kind of slipped in there 10 minutes before and, and got a couple of hand base. <laughs> awesome. I just, yeah, you guys are great. You guys are great. Um, right. So uh, um, Camilla says gambling winnings, not taxed in Canada, fortunately. Sure. Yep. 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 Uh, and um, uh, uh, Canada is uh, not as many kinds of comps, alcohol more expensive. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Um, and Linda has a question. Are there uh, multiple factors that could affect winnings? Not able to get hand pays like back at, at end, of, uh, end of year 2020. Been playing when see multiple hand plays hitting, but uh, just a small win so far. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I, it's, it's, I'm always kind of like debating with myself. Gee, I wish winning at slots would be easy. And then I put out a video, and I'm like, well, they either listen or they don't. I guess I'm done here, you know. <laughs> and 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 um, you know, so I, fortunately for a business, new stuff comes out. Uh, there's things like listening or and watching uh, which machines are um, set in the right uh, uh, vis highly visible location. Some casinos love to do that. Others, you know, just you know don't want to do that. Uh, and um, all these different things that are in play. Uh, it's partly due to to the many different ways that. Um, uh, the many different ways that the state gaming regulations vary. And so that has driven a wide variety of options. Um, now, I suppose if every state had the same gaming regs, uh, that one loophole would work at all of them. And then I'd be able to make one video on YouTube and then I'd go off and do, maybe do aerospace or something else because oh, that's it folks. Uh, but because it is so much variety, uh, so many different things being done by casinos because they can, uh, then I've got so many videos to make. I, I try to focus on the big picture, but you know, I'll put out a, a, a video about how to win at Washington's unique, truly unique class three machines based off the scratch ticket lottery system. You know, and and um, I'm I'm you know I've been putting together my knowledge base for for Oklahoma's Class Two machines or any state that has Class Two machines uh, to help people with those these bingo competition machines, uh, and I've been putting it together, putting it together, putting it together, and people are like, just tell us what you know, make it perfect later, and I'm like, okay, 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 so I'm working on getting that out for you. Um, and, but, you know, I try to keep it at a high level so that everybody is helped. Um, and then every once in a while I, I dive into historic horse racing in Kentucky and Arkansas, and now it's spreading through Wyoming and all the other states. So, uh, yes, there is multiple factors. Uh, it doesn't take a PhD. A PhD, um, me is, is trying to put this in a nice little package for you. Uh, and, um, uh, and that's a little bit by, uh, you know, what's going on when, uh, somebody was asking about, uh, well, there's multiple people with GEDs and high school diplomas, um, uh, or GEDs, uh, who say otherwise. And I'm just like, um, you know, no disrespect, but maybe they could read the gambling, reg the gambling regs. Um, uh, maybe they could listen to the people that they're interviewing and hear them say where it works. If you don't want to hear, um, not to use the analogy, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink. Um, you know, uh, if you don't want to know, if you made up your mind beforehand, um, I, well, I don't disparage other channels. <laughs> and they can't make me. <laughs> um, so next questions. Uh, uh, okay. Tribal says, uh, love the shirt. Um, thank you. Uh, I, I, I wore its partner shirt. Am I going to have to get more Hawaiian shirts for the show? <laughs> Cause I'm telling you now during the winter in Ohio, I'm wearing flannel. <laughs> um, uh, Brett says the five spin method is the reason for 95% of my jackpots. Yeah. I mean, the, at one casino I went to, that's all I did. 
and at the other casino they didn't have it and that's i had to do the one week later actually and i've i've, I've been talking about that elsewhere and excuse me just a moment so when it works it works and then you just wait for them to get rid of it but in the, in the meantime just wear out that chair <laughs> um uh, AT says, you're the best uh, prof. Uh, keep it up. Thank you, AT. I appreciate it. Camilla says, uh, uh, um, this is where my uh, lack of a plan uh, made me lose after winning bit larger jackpots would waste them on penny machines. Um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, but to go back to Camilla, um, as I talk about here, I've, I've been trying to, you know, focus on people's issues. Um that uh, uh, you know, first I helped you win, <laughs> and then you found out that it's hard to keep the winnings, <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, 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 I'll, I'll work on how to leave a machine that's a losing machine, how to leave a casino with your money, and how to preserve gains. So today's topic is if you increase your bankroll by significantly from 300 to 1,000, from 1,000 to 3,000, then your preserving gains technique may not scale to the, the higher level. If you use a lockable wallet, it, it's only so big. And it holds like, I think the one of the two holds like 50 bills, which is like $5,000. And, you know, Three thousand dollar bankroll, you you, know, you can barely fit three thousand dollars in it. What if you want a ten thousand dollar bankroll with well, thirty thousand dollars? I've won fourteen thousand dollar bankrolls, twenty seven thousand dollar bankrolls, ten thousand dollar bankrolls, multiple five thousand dollar bankrolls. You know, and it's like no, a lockable wallet, unless I've got you know keys rattling all over me, um, boxes on uh, all over me, um, uh, you know, multi like a fishing jacket with lots of pockets and all the, you no, know, no, uh, it 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 becomes something that also has to be changed because you're bringing more money to the casino. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, is uh, is this in any way applicable to online casino slots? Yes. Uh, if you, I don't have the link here. Uh, I don't like to put uh, use links here. If you look for bank the bonus, if you go to my website, uh, yes, should be able to do that. I'll show you. Um, if you go to my website and um, I got a, Big button, do you see? <laughs> big mouse, do you see it? If you go under strategies, click that. And there will be Tough Love, Washington, Friday Observations. And what you're looking for is this one here called Bank the Bonus. Bank the Bonus, an online slots winning strategy. So you click that and you come to the article. And uh, there's a video on YouTube, uh, which you can just watch from there. But it's, you know, it's a bunch of numbers and, and letters. So I don't have that memorized for you. Or you can just read it. Um, and what I, I need to put that into a podcast so I can put the podcast um, uh, link there, too. Um, thank you for inspiring me to remember that. So that's what, that's where you go for, for that, yes. Uh, um, let's see. <laughs> Kitty is happy today. Uh, Yep, there she is. Um, right there is Curie. Um, oh, can I can I show you this? Um, <laughs> and there's Isaac. <laughs> it's a warm day out, as as probably you might have seen with the um, uh, Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> so. I think he's just snored or snorted or something. Um, uh, yes, uh, Kiri uh, is uh, a, a associate producer, um, <laughs> and and um, uh, good to see you, uh, Sugar Moon Garden. And uh, so, a little bit off topic question from Camilla. Let's see what it is. Uh, off topic, but do you have any predictions? Uh, re how a possible economic downturn later this year may affect casinos. Um, uh, <sighs> casinos were badly affected by the pandemic two years ago 
and it was only a couple of months ago, maybe earlier this year, maybe that they got over it. It took like a year and a half. And even then they're just so, so nervous. So an academic downturn is not the same as all casinos closing suddenly for a month, for two months, for three months, where previously the, the casinos closed for one day on the funeral for President Kennedy in 1963. That's the other time when all casinos closed and it was for a day. So talk about unexpected. So relatively, and I've been doing this lately with some of the news with the um, uh, Ukraine and other stuff. Um, let's set priorities. Uh, the pandemic, uh, if everything shuts down, that would be the nightmare returned for casinos. Ec an ec economic downturn, if if that everything had closed situation had not happened and wasn't at all threatened by monkeypox or something. I don't know if I should use that word because YouTube algorithm checks all the words um, quickly and 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 uh, might <laughs> demonetize this video because of it. But but um, if all casinos close, that's what they're worried about. Uh, if um, there is an economic downturn later this year, well, that's the second worst thing, but it isn't close to the first. And the first, you know, is new, uh, a couple of years old, but it's it, it, this economic downturns would be the worst thing ever if that other thing hadn't happened. Uh, so let's just calibrate here. So I'm getting all kinds of messages um, uh, right now on, on something. Uh, so, so with that perspective, uh, what would the economic downturn look like? Um, what the casinos did in the pandemic was not spend money. And it was only earlier this year, not even well, like April, that they started loosening the purse strings, not to build an additional building, but to, you know, fix the slot machines in their casinos. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Horseshoe Indianapolis, formerly L uh, Indiana Grand, 10% of their machines were broken, 150 out of, you know, 1,500. I counted. <laughs> and, and, and the work orders on them were like four months old on some of them. Maybe they repaired a few of them, but there were, still wasn't 10% fixed. And so uh, there's also a lot of wearing out that's taking place. So casinos four months ago decided, five months ago, decided, okay, 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 you can buy a few slot machines. You know, you've been begging us to release the funds. We made back what we lost during the pandemic again and again and again and again and again. And we're a little reassured now that our bank vault's full of money. But, but you know, so I guess maybe you can buy a few machines. Well, uh, but they've put up building stuff. Uh, additions that had been in the plans in the works. I have a few inside contacts who are just like, yeah, we were going to build stuff and now we can't because the state gaming regulations in Pennsylvania, for instance, allowed satellite buildings to be put near established casinos and none of that, none of that happened. Uh, uh, and, you know, you know, it's a moneymaker because it costs money to build it and, and, and all these, you know, it's just not a good time for that. Um, even if they would make money because they can't get it done in any cheap manner. So I don't mean to go on about this, but the economic downturn that may come would prevent them from getting those buildings again. And some of those buildings need to be replaced. Also any new machines that they're going to get that would stop. And that's not a good thing when so many machines are still worn out. Uh, you know, a few of them got replaced, but you need to replace them for like a year or more. Um, so yeah, uh, um, that's going to be that's going to be where the sticking point is uh, in an economic downturn, where everything starts getting broken more and more. You have to cannibalize some of the slot machines to keep the others going, uh, and then just put work order signs on them because they don't have storage spaces in casinos because naturally they would make that a smoking parlor or something so they could get running machines and make $70,000 uh, per machine per month 
uh, on average in, uh, after returning 90% of what they made on that machine. Uh, so these are all gaming statistic numbers, um, mostly for in Indiana. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that it's, um, if the economic downturn, it depends on how long it lasts. Not to go too far on this, but it depends on how long it lasts. Uh, how long will machines hold out when people are hitting the buttons so hard? Uh, AT, uh, in Virginia, uh, are the queen of VA skill games, same as the queen of PA, uh, set to a central server for odds or individually programmed? Um, are you talking about uh, Rosie's? Uh, because those are historic horse racing games. And uh, so those aren't skill-based games. Uh, well, they sort of are. It's not bingo. It's horse races. And on the horse was a jockey once upon a time, a hundred years ago in Europe, because you can use the records way back because it's the same gaming regulations for the horse race. Uh, so it might've been in Australia, it might've been anywhere. They can use those records uh, for, you know, things from the 1800s uh, for these games to plug in those numbers. And so the skill was in the jockey. The skill isn't in the player. So, you know, when people start talk about skill-based games, it's kind of important to understand where that comes from. Uh, so uh, on historic horse racing, yeah, that's a central server. Uh, and um, because it's not uh, prevented. And so it's just easier for the casino to, to run all of them that way, uh, reduce workforce, faster uh, financial performance metrics, all that. So they just naturally do it. And so, um, but if you're talking about, um, um, I, I, if you're talking about like truck stops, um, um, push machines, push games, point pushers, uh, other stuff like that. Um, convenience stores don't have central servers. Uh, you need to have, I don't know, 25, 50 machines in order to even make it profitable. Uh, and 5,000 is better, 15, you know, 1,000 is better uh, for that sort of thing because it, it scales and it costs. And um, uh, these semi-illegal, gray legal area, maybe, maybe it's legal in some states. Uh, it's a whole thing going to these convenience stores. So find out which machines there are there and, and email me at john at professorslots.com. Give me the name of the facility or, or, or some information. I can tell you what kind of slot machines they have because uh, there's getting to be a couple variations and you need to know what kind of game it is to, in order to know um, which uh, which slot, which group of slot strategies I have that would work on it. Uh, I hope that helps. Serenista, uh, I would, uh, you, Serena C, sorry. You, you, you spelled it out for me. You, you, you spelled it phonetically for me one time, and I just have to remember that. Uh, uh, Serena C, um, kind of a question. I would be interested in hearing the range of one word answers to your most uh, recent survey, uh, casino visits, um, to recent survey, um, oh, year to date, uh, casino visits year to date. Um, uh, so uh, <laughs> um, let me see if I can plot that out for you. Uh, oh, um, I don't have that data. It's raw data. Also, um, I have a concern about privacy. Um, and, and sharing uh, that data. I wish that more casinos would share their data, but they're all very closed lipped. Um, and I, I, um, it's a privacy uh, thing for my audience members. I want to reassure them that, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not about you know, selling their data or anything like that. Um, uh, I could, but, um, you know, it, I, all I'm saying is valuable. I would like to um, collect a few more survey responses and then see what it says. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ask that question regularly, but I'm not... Um, it's hard. Uh, I don't know if you've done surveys before, but they're difficult <laughs> because you, you when, when you 
give people like a written a possibility to do a written answer they will say a lot of different stuff oh three and i'm like three times a week three times a month three times a year three times in your life i don't know <laughs> and so so i've been giving multiple choice answers uh to try to better understand um what they do but then some people are like no that's not a, it's none of those and I'm like, oh, sorry, I wonder which one it was. So uh, surveys can be interesting. They're um, incredibly valuable. And I, uh, uh, that sort of thing would be helpful uh, uh, for me to understand. Uh, and I will share what seems appropriate uh, to you guys. Yeah. Uh, and casino executives can, can just like uh, make me an offer. <laughs> um, So Richard asks a question. Have you tried the five spin method? Have you, okay, um, your sentence structure is a little off. Uh, five spin method, same machine, five spins per separate denomination on a single multi-denomination machines. Okay, I think I know what you're asking. You're asking if I did the five, me five spin method by on a multi-denomination machine, I picked one of the denominations and then I stopped. And then I did it again, but only did a different denomination and then a different denomination and then a different denomination. No, I haven't. Uh, partly because I have a $300 bankroll and I go and make minimum bets on the minimum denomination. And so if I win something with the five cent win, then it might be a $3 bet versus all my other 60 60 cent bets and then it becomes skewed like did I did I do well overall at that casino with the five spin method or did I just have a lucky hit once and so I try to make sure I don't change things up by changing denominations or credits bet otherwise my taking $300 to this casino, that casino, that casino, that casino, playing penny machines for minimum bets at this casino, this casino, this casino, that casino, it all becomes kind of like I can't compare the different casinos and see which one's better. Uh, I should make a separate trip to do that, or, or you can. Um, find a casino where the five-spin method works, is currently working, pick a multi-denomination machine, try it. Only cost you up to five bets. <laughs> uh, AT says, um, I see an Ethernet cable, but it's possible that goes to the payout kiosk. I'm trying to remember. Oh, uh, I, we don't know where the cable goes. Um, and uh, and you have a payout kiosk. That, that sounds... That sounds like a convenience store setup. Uh, so it, it um, if it is, uh, let's, I'll just go by, does it have five or 10 machines? Less than 10 machines? Then it's, 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 there's no way they can afford a central server, no way they even want it. Uh, there's other options like controlled by the uh, the lottery. But when you said payout kiosk, that's an arrangement that some convenience stores do in order to not have anything to do with the machines that have been installed. Uh, they just um, get what they get, their percentage, and it's hands off for the night clerk who's got a third job and is half asleep. Yeah. Uh, Sugar Moon Garden, I'm so... I'm. Yeah, I, I, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Uh, and I've committed to having it done in um, about a month uh, by the end of August uh, and uh, or the end of August. So just around a month, I've committed to having that, uh, that part done. Uh, and uh, we'll keep on working on it. Okay, so more Hawaiian shirts. Thank you, T-Ball. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. um, Sugar Moon Garden says, Every, anytime I've w ever won large jackpots, I've always took like a th quarter of it in cash and the rest in a check. That works. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can take, uh, you can do that. Yeah, animals conserving their energy, Camilla says, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a reason why I had 
my my some of my cats were co-hosts because they would just like lie on the table, <laughs> kind of yawn. <laughs> Um, yeah, Clint, I heard about uh, a station casinos closing and not reopening in Henderson. I'd heard about that, yeah. But that 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 wasn't, you know, that decision was made, I think that was at least a month ago. So it wasn't, um, they just, it's really hard for casinos. They're scared to death of being closed a month, two months, three months. Uh, and they were like, ah, oh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, they were so kind of like um, living on the edge. You might think they made money, and they do, but the investors wanted that money. And so uh, having cash for operating expenses, um, you know, and then the, and the not even knowing when they would reopen. Um, and so, yes, uh, some casinos have closed in the, in the world, in the country. Um, there was a uh, American Gaming Association had a app where they would update about in the country and they would say which one was commercial and which one was tribal. They would say which casinos are open and which machine, which casinos are closed and when they reopened on the pandemic. And I had live streams two years ago uh, when all that was going on and I would, I would share that. Um, yeah, right about two years from now, end of July, uh, I would share that app on, on the screen here and in my old live streams. And I would say, you know, out of the thousand casinos, half of them being tribal casinos, only these are open and all these gray uh, icons across the U United States um, uh, are the are the closed casinos and some of them never reopened. So plenty of casinos have closed then uh, and uh, the rest are, are struggling. Now, Henderson, Las Vegas, this is a whole economy um, uh, based on um, one industry, and I'm from myself, a town that is based on one industry, worse, one manufacturer, uh, Flint, Michigan. Remember the water crisis? Well, anyway, 30 years before, or before that, uh, uh, General Motors um, was the one company. They had like 80. There was a movie on it, Roger and Me, um, I think it was. Um, anyway, uh, Michael Moore. And um, uh, all that was... Uh, uh, you know the the the, um, the situation the they there was that industry is like washed in is like Vegas in that it has one industry you know Hershey Pennsylvania is chocolate multiple chocolate companies uh, and so Las Vegas is based on gambling and they've been working very hard they started what 1935 1934. At least that's when the first slot machines went in and what else matters, <laughs> but um, uh, in a desert. And they have been trying to switch over to tourism. They've been trying to switch over to to um, uh, conferences uh, and with limited success relative to casinos. Uh, and with more and more casinos, first it was Atlantic City opening into the east, so everybody didn't have to fly all the way to Las Vegas from the east coast. Then it's just everywhere, riverboat casinos up and down the East Coast, a um, bunch of ca uh, uh, casinos, tribal casinos in California with the IGRA federal law enacted in 1988 by Ronald Reagan uh, pre as president signing it. Uh, and Las Vegas is like a failed idea. But like General Motors in Flint, Michigan, they can close 30 factories and they still got 58 left. Uh, and they can close another 20 and it's still, you know, so many more. So it's just a failed concept, but they are invested in it. Um, there's plenty of people who work in Las Vegas in the gaming industry, bartenders um, at a restaurant in the forum shops, Caesars forum shops. They can't work anywhere else. They can't go anywhere else in the country and make, as much money as the visitors just tip them like seriously you know it, it it's a lot of money and so um it's it's all these people are invested in it and um it's kind of 
Well, we are talking about economic conditions here, aren't we? It's, it seems to be the theme of the show. Uh, Jason says, do you uh, do you see that tribal casinos pay out less than others? I go to Biloxi once a month and seem to do good, but there is a tribal casino closer to my home that never seems to hit as often. Um, I have seen return statistics from some sli uh, tribal casinos, uh, and they're just as, just as the same as commercial. Um, what's more important is whether or not a casino is isolated. So if you, you go to, um, uh, I'll share this with you. If you go to my website, professorslots.com, and you go all the way to the bottom, right here, as featured on ABC 27 News, is a, um, maybe a, uh, I, I can't show it because there's commercials and YouTube doesn't like to compete for, for commercials, but this is a eight-minute report, investigative report, um, uh, or you can just go to professorslots.com slash ABC27 uh, or hit that link. But it's an interview of me uh, by uh, ABC Channel 27, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, evening news, 11 o'clock news. Uh, and they interviewed me for like four hours, but they just put one of my jokes in about buffets, how much I'd, I'd shave a percentage point off of uh, my return for a good buffet. <laughs> Um, so, uh, they thought that was funny. And so they used that, but I told them mostly what they needed to know. Uh, they, they actually had done a previous, a little bit of previous work <clears throat> on, on understanding Pennsylvania's returns. Uh, and basically is if your casino near you is isolated, that's all there is to it. If it's commercial casino, tribal casino, doesn't matter. That casino is fully aware, excuse me. is fully aware that you need to drive a long way to go to any other place with a casino. That's it. That They have no nearby ca casinos, so they take advantage of you by lowering the odds because they can. And they can do that in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, with a local Penn National, as that report is about. But as you'll just listen to the last few seconds of the anchors talking to each other in that um, eight-minute segment, uh, and they will talk about, well, why isn't that the case up in Pennsylvania? Because they showed some statistics, not Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, it's which is well north. Uh, why isn't that happening at the uh, Philadelphia casinos? They have competitors. They're, they're not very far from one another. And they, so they have, you know, hey, I don't like what's going on here. I'm going to go to the next casino over. And that makes all the difference in the world. So it's not really a commercial and tribal thing. It's more of a, you know, your hard rock Tampa uh, and by golly, uh, you know, you got to th drive 300 miles to get any, to any other casino and they know that. Um, yeah. So if, uh, to, uh, answer a few questions here, uh, we are, well, um, do we have a, uh, we have a question. Good. Um, clarification. Would the same central server in a casino be the same one as the gas casino in the same building? Um, okay, so we're talking like really small. And uh, it's kind of a toss up. When you have a casino with an attached building, uh, which is really small, it does happen, casinos, right? It's, it's a term. Uh, and some of them are class three machines. See, Class two machines don't need it. Well, they sort of need it. They, they it's a different central server. Uh, um, class two machines, bingo machines, are often running the same bingo game, and that game is run on sub multiple machines by having a central connection, a central server. But then the class three machines uh, have a central server to adjust the odds on a schedule so that you don't have to have as many people uh, slot uh, text changing things. Uh, they, they are less used that way and more automated and it's just what you do, but you have to pay for that machine. So, you know, the basic rule that I go by is does it have altogether 40 machines? Um, you know, if it's a huge casino, then they, they'll have it there. Uh, do they run a cable out to the, the casino? I don't know. <laughs> they could, they could. Uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, 
yeah, there's always, you always want to go deeper into these things, don't you? That's, that's, I admire that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, John, is it 45 or is it 40 uh, slot machines? And I'm like, uh, you know, I haven't, it's always, is it five spin method or is it six spin method or is it four spin method? And I'm like, huh? <laughs> so I, so there's, there's always more minutia, uh, which I think is just great. Um, I wish I knew. Uh, and it sounds like uh, maybe you can ask um, or something. Uh, check to see if the casino, the gas casino has class two machines, in which case it would not really matter if they did um, uh, uh, have a central server for those because it would not be the central server you want them to have, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, right. So uh, improve your slots play for um, your slots performance in 30 days or less with my uh, uh, online course, uh, 30 days to play slots smarter and win. Uh, you also get three free valuable bonuses, including one month free to my slots IQ membership. We have our meeting tonight already. Uh, looking forward to it. Um, and you'll get uh, there, you'll get community support and accountability. Visit professorslots.com slash 30 days to learn more about the free bonuses, course content, um, bonuses, uh, testimonials, 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 ah, course content. Uh, here's the section of course content, and then the bonuses are there, uh, and et cetera. So, um, uh, uh, but to see, uh, um, but if you're still on the fence about whether to buy the course, the price of the course is increasing this weekend. It will soon no longer be 40% off for an $80 savings at midnight Eastern on Sunday, July 31st. As you can see from this countdown clock, three hours, three days, eight hours, 48 minutes, 56 seconds. Um, and once you have purchased the course, you have lifetime access uh, and all further uh, uh, increases in price, and there will be none, uh, will not matter to you. So if you don't have the course, don't wait to do it later. Time is running out. Okay, that is it. Um, <laughs> what a great live stream. Uh, you can see me in my next live stream on, on Saturday at noon Eastern. Next, I highly recommend this video on what's better than my five spin method. Bye.